Hello everyone and welcome to Mag's How To Videos. My name is Kale Magnuson and today I'll be doing a review on the Kai Wheats HT118 Alpha Multimeter. Now, before I start the review on this multimeter, let me give you a little background history about myself. As of this video, I've spent over five years as a full-time vehicle mechanic. During those years, I have used a variety of makes and models of multimeters. And because of that, I feel like I have acquired a good understanding on what makes a good quality multimeter. With that said, I also wanna let you guys know this is not a paid sponsored video. The Kai Wheats Corporation has sent me this multimeter free of charge to do a true honest review. And that is what I intend to do. So, with that said, let's start testing this multimeter. Now you can see I've already unboxed the multimeter, and let me say it was well packaged. Inside you'll find, of course, the multimeter, a pair of positive and negative test leads with top and bottom end caps, another test lead, a manual, and a pair of AA batteries. To install the AA batteries, all you have to do is flip the multimeter over, lift the stand, remove the one Phillips head screw, remove the panel, and install the batteries. So I've been using this multimeter for about a week now, and what I like about it is, is that it's got a very traditional setup. What I mean by that is that it's very similar to all the other multimeters I've used in the past. So, if you don't know how to use a multimeter, please feel free to check out one of my other how-to videos. There, I will go more in depth on how to properly use a multimeter, that and the different tests to perform to test for volts, amps, and ohms. This multimeter has a pretty cool feature that I haven't seen in any other multimeter. And it is, well, if you turn the knob to a setting, let's say volts, all four terminals light up. But the two flashing are the ones indicated that need to be used for your test leads for that specific function. Like, let's say we go to milliamps. The two bottom ones light up. Why? Because that is the milliamp port, and it also has a 600 milliamp slash 250 volt fuse built in. Or if we go to the amp section, the two adjacent ones light up. Again, this is the amp port, and it's got a standard 10 amp slash 250 volt fuse built in. And it's very important that you know which terminals you need to be using for your test leads when you know, performing tests or you won't get accurate readings, especially when you're testing for amps, because if you don't use the right port, you may end up blowing a fuse. Another cool feature that I like about this is the screen itself. It's got a fairly big screen, or technically it's a standardized screen, but what makes it look big is the large font on the screen, and it's very nice and easy to read. Another feature is the backlight. It's very, very bright and works great for when you're underneath a vehicle or in a dark spot and you're having a hard time reading the numbers. Now, this is another feature that I've not seen on a multimeter before, and it is a built-in flashlight. If you hold down the you know, light button in the front, the flashlight will illuminate. It's not super bright, but again, pretty interesting feature to have for a multimeter. Turn it off, you can hold down the button again, or you can turn the knob to the off position. Last but not least, another cool feature this thing has is a cool NCV live reader. And again, I've had a few multimeters that have had it attached and a few that haven't, but it's surprising that a multimeter at this price actually has one on it. Now, one of the things I want to point out is, is that when you have the test leads in the terminals, they do seem a little wobbly, but that's okay. Trust me, they're fully secured in there. Like, they're pretty difficult to pop right out. You really gotta, God, there we go. You gotta really pull on to get them out. So they're definitely secured in there, making good contact. So for my first test, we're gonna be testing DC voltage. And to do so, I have a DC power supply given to me by Coeats, and I'll be doing a review video on that one as well later. To begin, make sure everything is zeroed out and then turn on the machine. I will then crank up the voltage 
And you can see that the multimeter reads 21.88 and the DC power supply reads 21.87. It's pretty accurate. Um, it could be either one of these that are slightly off, but again, 0 0.01 is not that big deal. I mean, look, there it goes to 21.88. So the multimeter is pretty darn spot on. The next test I want to perform is an amp test. So first I'm going to zero out all my DC power supply knobs. Next I'm going to remove the red test lead, put it in the 10 amp port. I'm going to then turn multimeter to amps. Make sure the light's on. All right, there we go. So now we're all set up to test this out. Now I'll turn the knob. For the amps, let me increase the voltage a little bit so it just goes. All right, so there we go. Now we got amps going. And you can see it's it's fairly accurate. 3.92 amps, it says 3.94, so it's a little off there, but not much. Um, let's see, we tweak this a little bit. So it seems like it's a, it's off um, 0 0.016 compared to this. But again, I'm pretty sure it is the DC power supply that the readings that are a little off because I have tested this with another multimeter and I was getting roughly the same, uh, you know, compared readings. So there we go. Here I'm going to perform a AC power test. I'm going to see how many volts are from the wall outlet. Standard should be about here in the US 110 to 120. So let's try it out. And we're getting 120. Look at that, 0.5. So that's pretty good reading right there. Fairly accurate. Yep, see? So in this test, we're going to test out the NCB Live feature that this multimeter has. So we'll turn it to that. All right. Then we'll hold it in front of the outlet. There we go. We got a green light indicating we got the low. And then with this computer cable that's plugged into the wall, hold it up to the cable. Oh, there we go. And it says it's high. There you go. So the feature for this works pretty well. All right. So on this last test I'm going to perform uh, for you is the test for continuity and resistance. I don't have anything like a burnt wire to test for high resistance, but I was able to find this 40 amp fuse laying around that I figured eh, it'd be pretty good to use to test. It's a good fuse, so I've, I've tested it with another multimeter. So we're going to test it with this one and see what it says. All right, there we go. And uh, we'll turn on the uh, beeping function so you can tell. All right, so we'll put one on this terminal. And this one, there we go. So it says it's good. I also like how the light turns red and green, telling you if you have a good connection or not. Uh, there we go. Let's turn that on. Uh, all right. So 0 0.0021. It's pretty low and pretty accurate. So I think it did pretty good. Well, there you have it. Now you have a true honest review on the Kai Wheats HT118 Alpha Multimeter. Now, if I was to rate this thing, the first category I'd base it off of is the overall design. And with its sleek modern look, and with the cool features of the light-up terminals, a flashlight, and MCV live reader, I would definitely give this a 5 out of 5. With its overall price of roughly $30, again, 5 out of 5. Now, for the overall functions, you know, tests, learning how to operate and use the different features on this thing, I would give it a 4 out of 5. It's pretty similar to the other multimeters, but it is a little tricky here and there on some of the settings. Last but not least, but the most important one, is how accurate is this multimeter? 
Now, when I compared it to some of my other high-end multimeters, it came out pretty close. It wasn't quite as accurate as some of them, and some of the uh, tests that I've done were a little inconclusive, but I would definitely give it a four out of five. So that gives us an average of what? Four and a half out of five or a nine out of 10. So again, definitely recommend this multimeter. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, please click on the like button below. That and subscribe to my channel to see more how-to videos because my channel is out there to help you guys learn how to do things on your own so you don't have to pay somebody to do it for you. Whether it be to learn how to do something, make something, or operate something. That is why my channel is here. So the more subscribers I have, the more videos I'll make, the more videos that are out there, the easier your day-to-day -day lives can be. So again, I appreciate you watching this video. Until next time, God bless and good luck.